Um, I suppose quite early on in, in my career um, you, you, you were becoming more and more frightened by what was going on and there was an enormous temptation to be persuaded you had six other people with you in the aeroplane and when things, when searchlights started uh, illuminating you and anti-aircraft guns started firing, um, there was an incredible temptation to turn around and go back, turn tail and scuttle. And um, having six other people's lives in your hands as well, uh, didn't really ease the burden. So that, that was a great decision of, of um, having to decide that you, you must carry on, you must keep going. So that probably is one of the, every night that you went out, you faced that decision and you just had to live with it and get over it. Well, they are so much different from what I know. I mean, um, we're talking of a long, long time ago, and the equipment which is now available, I mean, I give you some impression. Um, the Sterling aircraft, I mean, in, in the days when this was going on, at the, at the Battle of Britain time, there were campaigns run in this country for contributing money to buy a Spitfire and they were aimed at £5,000 and that would buy a Spitfire. Today a Typhoon would cost you I think over £2 million so you can the, the level of technology which is involved in modern day warfare is of a completely different order of magnitude and therefore impossible for me to say how well or how badly current wars are being done. Um, well in fact I, I didn't, I mean when you say normal what do we mean you see? I mean I didn't go back to where I was before the war, I didn't go back to my old job uh, during the war, I had become married, I had a most wonderful wife, and the two of us sat down at the end of the war and said, well, what are we going to do now? And my wife very wisely said, well, there's only one thing you know what to do, and that's to fly. So why don't you stay in the Royal Air Force? I applied to do that, and after a bit, uh, I was allowed to do that, and I then went on until I was age 61, still serving in the Royal Air Force, so it was wonderful. Would you mind explaining to us what some of these pictures Oh, the pictures, yes. Well, that was the airplane which I flew for most of my operations. It's a short Sterling. It was the first of the four-engine bombers which were being produced in increasing numbers uh, because at that stage of the war we were on our own, America had not yet declared war, and Bomber Command was the only means we had of inflicting damage on the enemy. Uh, the Royal Navy was doing an incredible good job of keeping open the supply lines to this country, but that was all defensive. This was the only offensive and as somebody once said, you can't win a football match by having 11 foot, uh, goalkeepers. You need a centre forward. And Bomber Command was the centre forward. That was the, the, the aircraft had four crew. Uh, that is me with the other the navigator, the bomb aimer, the wireless operator, the engineer, and two gunners, one on the upper turret and one in the rear turret. The heating arrangements in the aircraft were extremely crude and elementary 
so you had to wrap up pretty well and this in fact was the first attempt at what was called an electrically heated suit. I'm afraid it didn't work very well. Uh, as well as dropping bombs we always included in or always was included in the load a lot of leaflets uh, to try and inform the people that what was going on. This was at the time of the uh, Americans uh, invading Italy. Uh, another one of the leaflets, a, 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 a play on a, a, a typical Ameri a German magazine equivalent of Punch. Um, one didn't um, always get away scot-free on these raids with the fighters and the flak. That was the end of one sortie I flew where we had been attacked by fighters and unfortunately damaged the aircraft to such an extent that we ended up in the side of a half-built hangar back at home. Uh, after the war we went round, um, we were allowed to fly over Germany to see the effect of the bombing. Uh, it was really very terrible indeed. That is Cologne Cathedral obviously in the midst of a vast area of devastation.